Hey there! Welcome to my bathroom! A bathroom which we've over the course of the last couple of months, to be honest, closer to half a year, completely tore down and rebuilt from scratch. And now we're finally at the point where this thing is usable. Most of the hard work is done and we do actually live here. But there's just one sort of important tiny little detail that's missing. We sort of don't have a ceiling yet. So today's video will finally fix that. Now there's actually a surprising amount of stuff that goes on in a ceiling like this. We'll obviously have to sort out some lights because right now we just got a construction light sort of gently wired into a switch on the outside. There's a big water junction box up there that needs a hatch. Now, yes, you could be wondering why did we get to the point of not having a ceiling? Ah, and also why is there water in this? That's kind of trippy. Yet we are finished with all the tile work all the walls and basically anything else. Also, isn't this kind of trippy? Why is there so much water in here? <clears throat> well, I don't really know. I've never built a bathroom before and there never seemed like a good time to start on the ceiling. So, we're doing it now. Got this place cleaned up and covered up so that when we now go to make a mess, hopefully we won't make too much damage on the finished surfaces. Now the system that I'll be using to make this structure that will hang the drywall onto is provided to us by Nuriips. Nuriips, you might remember, is the same company that's provided us with all the framework and the drywall for the entire apartment. So thank you so much guys, I'm really looking forward to working with this. Now the way the system works is that there's a C-channel like this that will get screwed on all the way around the ceiling and then they've got a system of these things which then will slot in like this and create the whole framework. But first, let's screw these onto the walls. And of course, I've got my trusty laser up on the wall there, now creating a line all the way around the perimeter. All right, perfect. And for the other side here, I've already prepared by attaching a couple of blocks of wood so that we have something to attach this thing onto. those bits are on now here comes the fun part or at least the part that should be pretty satisfying because the system should work kind of like Lego where there's an extrusion like this and a connector piece like this that slide into place and then these two pieces should just snap in place and that's it let's try it out all right so one of these into the channels here all right and that's a long one. We shall have to go in the truck all the way back there. Connector bit. Huh? I heard a click. I think that was it. Now we'll just keep adding in these bracing pieces. That was nice and quick. Now for the shorter ones, I just cut those to size and installed them the same exact way. All the pieces are on and that went really quick. Now this whole structure, as of now, is pretty wobbly, but we can fix that. With these bits, these are to attach into the ceiling and they're adjustable. One of the bits will go into the rails that we've already installed. The top of this either goes flat against the side beams or bent over against the ceiling, put them together, adjust them like this. And then here's the cool part. These holes are slightly offset. So even if you just move it a little bit, a new hole will line up. Once you've got the right height, shove in one of those pins and you should be good to go. Now here comes the interesting bit. The ceiling height here is almost three meters and I don't have a tripod that's tall enough for that. My thinking was, okay. I guess that works. Have to admit that right there does look kind of dicey, but we're going with it. So one of these bits, and then these, which I've cut down a little bit. Totally forgot the pin. I'll put that pin in there for now. That's not going anywhere. Right, pin out, adjust the thing to the right height, insert pin and we're good. Wow, okay. We'll do a couple more of those in an S's. That's the whole roof structure done. Literally only took with figuring everything out like a couple of hours. 
Now next up, it's time for some electrical. We need to install some boxes to give some air to the big spotlights that we'll be using. We also need to hook up wires in between all of these boxes and from the electrical outlets. And then once that is done, we'll shove the entire ceiling full of my favorite material, insulation. Right, insulation is in. Not my very job, but it's done. Now, finally, getting to cover all of this up. For that, of course, we're gonna use drywall. Now, since all the other surfaces around here are already finished, these pieces do need to be a bit precise. And I've tried my best to cut out the first piece so that it fits pretty well. I have not test fitted it yet, so I guess we'll all get to figure out at the same time if this is gonna be a long day or not. God. Oh, I also need, somehow need to get all of these wires through here. This is super easy. That's not working so well. Great. Super easy. Don't need any help. <laughs> I love the drill down there. I can't reach it. Ah, uh, got it. Hallelujah. Don't admit. That went way worse than I was hoping for. I both managed to damage it in the corner there. I did the same thing over in this corner. These were really hard to pull through. And the gap here is not fantastic. Luckily, this is only the first layer of two. I guess we can just call this practice because I'm not taking it back down. All right, next piece. This time this piece is just square. So hopefully, maybe <laughs> there's less opportunity for me to mess this up. But I'm sure I'll find a way. Hold on, forgot something. Drill the heat. Oh, I think it fit, sort of. Hey! Last part, I can already tell you that I wanna cut this out. I've already made one mistake. I cut it out the wrong way around. Luckily, that doesn't matter because it's just the first layer. It does seem to fit pretty well, but we need to make a hole for the rainfall shower. And to do that, I put some chalk on the flange. We'll just push this all the way up. Hopefully. Hey, hey, can you see that little blue ring? I'm back with a hole. Oh well, it was too good to be true. That was the first layer. Everything's covered. Please ignore the brown thing. Before layer two, I'll use some flexible acrylic. This one is from Bostick to go all the way around. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Oh, I forgot a piece. Well, after that piece. Make sure everything is sealed properly, and then we're on for layer two. But first, a quick ad for today's sponsor, Omaze. I am super excited to be working with Omaze to offer you guys a chance to win a tiny home worth $130,000 by Trueform Tiny. While at the same time supporting a great cause, the National Park Foundation. So if you win, you'll get a chance to design your own custom dream tiny home together with Trueform Tiny worth $130,000. And man, look at these things and seeing how cool they look and how finished they look both on the inside and outside, I do get a little jealous. It would be nice to have something as finished looking as opposed to what we're currently doing, which is, let's face it, living in a construction site. <laughs> So, for a chance to win a tiny home worth $130,000 from Trueform Tiny, head to amaze.com slash A-L-C-H and enter now. Donations will support the amazing work of the National Park Foundation. And now for the second layer, it's even more important that everything is precise. And these pieces are getting it pretty complicated because the angles in the showers aren't quite 90 degrees. I'm trying to get no overlaps with the first layer of plasterboard. I've marked everything up, I'll cut it out and just, fingers crossed, hope for the best. Now all that's left is hoping it fits. done. On to the fun part, which is cutting out the holes for the lights in the ceiling. Now normally, it wouldn't be super important to do that before we sand and fill and make everything smooth, but these lights are kind of special because this huge thing is just a frame that will hold one light. And this whole 
big sturdy aluminum frame is just there to make the light not have any visible trim around the edge. Talking about the light, I think these are by far one of my favorite lights just ever. They come from modular lighting instruments. You ready? <laughs> Look at this cool thing. This whole ball lights up and the light is just amazing. I'm super excited to get these all hooked up and show you guys. Now this thing is called Shelby and it's made by a company called Modular Lighting Instruments. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Modular. They gave us a fantastic price on these lights. And actually, apart from the small LED strips that we'll use throughout the apartment, like in the niches and in the shower and stuff, they've supplied us with all the lights for the entire apartment. And there's a lot of really cool lights. So like I said, the way this works is that this thing gets inserted into a hole in the ceiling. You then fill and sand this smooth to the ceiling so it's not visible anymore. And then this thing should get inserted into there and it then snaps into place, which makes it so there's no lip or transition or anything between the surface of the ceiling and the light itself. Next up, cutting the holes to fit these. Now, the hole is pretty big. Now, luckily, I was smart enough that before we installed the drywall, I marked the location of the blue boxes on random places like the countertop or the floor. And now I can use my laser and I know where the corner of the box is up there. That's a big hole. All three of these are installed. I think this is gonna look super good. I've also cut the hole for the main water shutoff valves and everything like that. Next up is using some drywall mud and filling the gaps in the drywall, as well as smoothing out the transitions on all these lights. Because right now, they're a little bit proud. And the way we're meant to do this is just fetter everything out with some mud. I'm gonna make a mess. Yep. It's been a really long time since I worked with drywall mud. In fact, the last time I touched this stuff, I built a wall in our workshop that we just moved into. And it was just like one big open space. I feel like this should be a masterclass on how to make a mess in your newly built bathroom. We'll start by taping all the seams. Make sure everything is good and well seated in there. And while we're up here, we'll do the first pass of feathering this out as well. Oh, and all the little screw holes as well, of course. Finally at the point where once I'm done sanding this, we can start painting. This is, I think, the fourth coat. I've just gradually feathered in everything, filling in wider and wider areas every time I do it. So that once I'm done sanding this, go to apply paint, everything will be nice and smooth. And yeah, even though it's super dusty, this seems to work the best. I also tried one of those sticks. Doesn't work at all. I do have one of these with a vacuum, just can't find it. And I have a really big one, which is just too big. At least this is really satisfying to sand compared to the stuff we have on the walls, which is micro cement, which was a huge pain to sand. All right, a bit more sanding. Oh, nice and smooth. <laughs> All right, first up, a coat of waterproofing primer, sort of weird blue transparent stuff. Finally, it's time for some color. We're going with the same color in the ceiling that the micro cement on the walls is. Everything's prepped. I painted around the outside edges with a brush. Now it's just time to roll the color onto the ceiling. <laughs> Try not to make too much of a mess. And this is exciting because now is the time that we finally get to see if I did a good job smoothing out the transitions between the lights and the rest of the ceiling. God, I really hope I did. If not, I have to do all of this again. Man, this first call is always so satisfying. And that's it. All that hard work 
I think it paid off. Everything looks great. That was just the first coat. We'll let that dry. Come back and do the second and then it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> Finally, we have a ceiling and it's painted. I've removed all the masking tape and I think it actually turned out quite all right. There's still a few things left though. We have to install everything and we need to drill a couple of holes. The first one is a really big one for ventilation. And for that, I made this contraption, which is basically half a bucket with a hole drilled in it and a big hose on it, which hopefully, if we get lucky, will sort of prevent the dust from spilling out all over the place. Something. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Not bad, huh? I almost drilled a hole in direct position. Well, we'll get that installed and then also drill some holes for some outlets. Yeah. Now, slowly but steadily, we're not done, but we're getting closer. And I'd say that this is starting to look like a bathroom that's actually usable. Because, check this out. We've got lights in the ceiling! That actually worked! So the electrician came by and hooked up everything. So now the light is controlled on a dimmer switch on the outside. And both the light in the ceiling as well as the niches are dimmed together. Isn't that cool? Also, talk about dimming. The Shelby lights from Modular Lighting have this really cool feature which is called dim to warm. So right now they have like a regular warm white color to them. But when we dim it down, it gets more and more warm at the same time it gets more and more dim i just think they look really great and the warm dim feature is really cool i'm very excited to see what that's going to look like in the living room because we'll install those not only in the ceiling but also in the walls now you might have noticed that there's something else really cool on the wall here this thing right here with temperature on it which is the temperature control for the heated floor, you might remember that I installed heated floor cables in the entire floor in the bathroom. All of those were supplied to us by Bug and the Comfort, and they've also supplied us with this temperature controller. This thing is their temperature controller in their Homeify range, and it's actually really cool because not only does it look nice and controls the temperature, you can also connect it to the phone, so you can control it via an app and you can set different temperatures depending on what time of day it is. A feature which is going to be really handy when we're going to install the floor heating in the entire apartment because then we can set it to lower the temperature during the day when we're not home anyways. So why waste uh, money on the expensive electricity? And then shortly before we get home, temperature rises, we come home to a warm apartment and we've saved a bunch of money. So thank you so much for my comfort and I'm really looking forward to installing the rest of their products in the rest of the apartment. Now, other than that, we've just finished up small bits and pieces, like this situation up here, which houses all the wires that come from the dimmers and go out to the different lights and LED strips. We've also installed a fan and Vildep painted it the same color to match the ceiling, which makes it so that it barely is visible. And we did the same thing for the open hatch, which you can barely see. But this is where all the controls for the water are. And then last but not least, we've also installed the door. So let's have a bit of privacy. And with that, that's pretty much it for this video. We've gotten a whole lot closer to a finished bathroom. The only last thing that we need to make in here is the furniture that will go over the washing machine and we'll make a cool sink and stuff in there. And obviously we need the glass doors for the shower. But all that in upcoming videos. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time we upload something new. That's for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.